Hello world, today I'm going to show you how to dynamically set the parent activity for a given activity in Android Studio. This is useful when the user is able to navigate to an activity from two or more activities and you want to control the activity to which the user returns. There are two methods to do this, the easy way and the hard way, and I will show you how to do both. For our example, we're going to create four activities, a main activity, and what we'll call the first activity and second activity, and also another activity we'll call the override up activity. Three of the activities will have a parent of main activity. So by default, when the user clicks the up command on their Android app, it'll take them back to the main activity. However, we're going to alter the app's behavior so that each of the activities will be able to access the other activity in the way that's shown below. Notice our override up activity is going to be able to go back to either the first activity or the second activity and each the first and second activity will both be able to access the override up activity. There's going to need to be quite a bit of coding involved to get this activity up and running. So if you're coding along as you're watching this video, be prepared to push the pause button. Let's begin. First thing you need to do is open up Android Studio and start a new Android project. Give your project a name. Here we're calling it Up Navigation Override and click on Next. Select the desired SDK that you want for your app then click on Next. Select the blank activity and then click next. You can give your activity a name here or you can just leave it as the default name and then click on finish. Now our main activity is going to be the landing page if you will, the first activity the user sees. So alter the text view that appears on the activity to have a label of main activity so we always know which activity that we're looking at. Give it a unique ID, simply text view will do. Then below that create a button with a text first activity. Give it a unique ID, in this case button will do. And then create a second button below that one. Give it the text second activity and then give it a unique ID, in this case button two. Click on the design tab just to see how the activity is laid out and it should look something like this. Right click on the package in your app explorer, select new activity, blank activity. Name this activity first activity. Click on the button with the three dots. Make sure main activity is highlighted and then click on OK. This will set the parent activity for our first activity to be main activity. Click on finish. Give your text view an ID and change the text to read first activity. Then create a button below it with an ID of a button and give it some text that says go to next activity. If you look at it in your design view it should look something like this. Once again right click on the package in the app explorer. Select new activity blank activity. Name this one second activity and then select main activity as a parent activity much as we did for the previous activity and click on finish. Change the text of the text view to read second activity. And make sure that it has an ID of text view and create a button below that that says go to next activity and also give it an ID. If you look at it in the design view it'll look something like this. And Once again right click on the package in your app explorer. Select new activity blank activity. Name this activity up override activity. Set the hierarchical parent to main activity and click finish. Change the text view here to read up override activity and create a button below it that says go to previous activity. Make sure both your text view and your button have IDs and then your activity will look like this in the design view. Now go to the Java file for your main activity. Create two button variables to correspond to the buttons we created on the layout. Instantiate your buttons with the find view by ID method and we'll start by creating an on click listener for the first button. Inside the on click listener, instantiate an activity with the class first activity and also add the method to start the activity. Do the same thing for the second button, this time giving it a class of second activity. Go to the Java file for your first activity, create a button variable, then instantiate your button variable with the find view by ID method and give it an on click listener. Here we're going to do something a little different. We're going to create a bundle object and then we're going to add a key value pair to it. For those of you who don't know, a bundle is just an object that acts as a hash map that you can pass to an intent. Here our key that we're going to pass will be go to and the value will be first activity. Then we can create our intent with the class up override activity, pass the bundle to the intent and then start the activity. Then go to the Java file for your second activity. Much as we've done before, create a button variable, instantiate the button, and give it an on-click listener, much as we did for the previous activity. This time, the string that we're passing in our bundle will be second activity. Make sure it has the same key as before, which reads go to. Now go to the Java file for your up override activity, create a button variable, 
instantiate your button and add an on-click listener. Now this button is going to return us to the previous activity, whichever activity it was that the user was looking at before arriving here. And in order to do that, we just call the finish method. This is the easy way that I alluded to at the beginning of the video. If you want the user to go to the previous activity, whenever the button on the toolbar is clicked, you'll need to override the on-click listener for the toolbar and have the finish method execute there. However, doing so will override the other example that I alluded to at the beginning of the video the hard way. So we're just going to take this out of the code for now. Now override two of the activities methods get support parent activity intent and get parent activity intent. For compatibility reasons, it's very important that you override both of these methods because APIs 11 and later will call get parent activity intent and all the APIs leading up to API 10 will call get support parent activity intent. The Android documentation does not clarify this at all. And in both of these methods, we're going to return the value from a yet to be defined method, get parent activity intent implement. Now let's define that. First we create an intent, then we get the bundle that was passed to this activity, and then we get the value from the bundle that corresponds to the key go to. And then we use that string to determine which activity we came from. If it's equal to the first activity, then we'll go back to the first activity. Otherwise, we're going to go to the second activity. Notice inside the if statement, we're setting flags for our intent. This will allow the user to reuse the previous activity as it was left before arriving at this current activity. In our else statement, we're not passing any flags. We're actually putting string value pairs into the intent. Neither of these are necessary, but they are nice options to have. Use your imagination here. And that's all there is to it. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching.